it here on the tailgate, put it in the bowl. Antelope friends are checking you out, Allie. They are wondering about you. Peppers in there. Oh, man, that's gonna be good. Primus, fire hole 100. And this will be my infield review of this stove. the mountain dog, net and fancy, time to cook again. This is our location. Pretty, isn't it? It's about 40 degrees outside, not too cold. Allie doesn't need her fleece on or boots. We're gonna be doing tailgate stir fry. Right here, right now. Big herd of antelope right there, check this. Allie doesn't see him. Antelope friends, we love our antelope. We don't see a herd this size in the summertime, just the winter. They're watching Allie really close. Their wolf instincts kicking in. Allie, go get those antelope, dummy. They're out that way. Go get her. You don't see them, do you? All right. Maybe we'll check in with the antelope as time goes by. Oh, look how pretty this is. Go on, dummy. She doesn't see him. She can smell him. Her legs are doing pretty good. Her back legs. Thank you very much. We are glad for it. She runs about twice or three times a week now is all. We don't want to wear her out. Come over this side, dog. Come here. She is running collarless today because she often rides with Mrs. Nut and Fancy in the car and her collar scratches up the car. She sticks her head out the window. Get over here, dog. She's gonna get a workout in the snow. Good girl. Allie is nine years old. Last month, she turned nine. Look, our antelope friends are checking you out, Allie. They are wondering about you. Don't worry guys, she's harmless. Allie, come here, let me see if I can show Allie these guys. Get over here, come. Come here, I wanna show you something. All right, I gotta put her gaze right on him. Okay, what is that? Do you see those? Do you see those? Right there, there's a whole bunch right there. No, Allie, over 
right here. That way. Pokey, 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 pokey. Finally saw him. Dude, there's no way you are gonna catch those antelope. <laughs> She's gonna try. Look at this expanse. Wow, I just love this area. It's beautiful. Alley marking her territory. Look at these guys, they keep coming back to keep tabs on Alley. Isn't that funny? I can't quite make them out. It might be the bucks that are doing that. Trying to protect the herd. She's gonna be so worn out. What are you doing, dummy? I gotta get to cooking. As fun as this is, and it is fun, it's time to cook. You help yourself. You go on and chase those guys, see if you can uh, catch up with them. Good luck. They're fast. Yeah, those are antelope, dog. Good girl. Kind of trained Allie around livestock her whole life. And she considers antelope livestock no different than cows, horses. She doesn't care. No big deal. She'll run after them, play a game of tag. That's about it. It's okay. Free. You're free. Go on. Silly. I got to get to work here. Otherwise, this video is going to be like two hours of watching you run around in the snow. It's fun, though. It is fun. So here's our stove for today. Primus Fire Hole 100. This will be my in-field review, by the way. Never used it before. Here's your features. It's got an igniter, fuel line, control knobs, a grill, windshields, too on the side. We're not backpacking here, so we can pack kind of heavy. This is car cooking on the tailgate. Here's the supplies right here. Oh yeah, in a Rubbermaid container. I've got my pans in here, some seasonings, utensils, a couple other things you'll see. We'll put some cashews in this as well. Let's get going. The hose routes underneath right there. Fuel cylinder from storage. Had that one for a while. I was going to bring a big old 20 pound propane cylinder, but I didn't. I'm going to have to rely on these. I like that griddle this thing has. That is heavy duty. There's a weight, by the way. If you do decide to carry it somewhere. Cool, let's see if it's working. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right, this could be good. No wind today, as you can see. It's just a gorgeous winter day. Beautiful. You guys are gonna love this recipe I do. Really simple, I've done it backpacking before. Piece of cake, healthy too. 
We'll come back to the stove in a sec. We ain't quite ready to cook. Stock ingredients. Tailgate stir fry here in the Nut and Fancy Project. Boneless, skinless chicken breast. Could be any kind of meat you wanted. Grouse, quail, pheasant, any other bird you could get a hold of. We're using chicken breast, easy, and it is delicious. White onion, celery, cabbage, definitely. Peppers, and I bought various colors today. Carrots, that's it. And then we'll mix up some rice, serve it with that. I'll make my own sauce from the ingredients you can see on the tailgate here. It'll be soy sauce. I have some teriyaki sauce uh, in the front. Garlic salt, a little bit of that, regular salt. Love this. Creole seasoning, I use it like in everything. Some sesame seeds and like you saw earlier, throw a few of these in there. This is my pre-measured minute rice with alley hair on it. Not in it, but on it. So that's minute rice, some salt, a dollop of margarine in there. It's ready to go. This is great backpackable stuff, minute rice. You can pre-measure that out. It cooks so easy and it is really good. A little bit of oil. We'll cook the chicken first. Thinking about two celery stalks is all. That's all we need. The knives doing the cutting today will be an AG Russell kitchen knife, cold steel kitchen knife. Both excellent. About two stalks of celery is all. When I take this recipe backpacking, I have it pre-measured, of course, everything pre-cut. I didn't really rinse everything off beforehand, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut it here on the tailgate, put it in the bowl, and then I'll rinse it in the bowl. Drain it, and then we'll cook the veggies as high heat as we can possibly muster out of that Primus stove. Oriental cooking, you want to sear it in. You don't want to overcook it either. You want it to stay crunchy. No one else with me except Alliness and myself, so this will be kind of a serving for one. That's probably enough. Two stalks of celery. Throwing it in our bowl for now. We'll rinse it out here in a sec. Let's do the onion next. You could vary how you cut these as well. You could cut them into smaller pieces if you want it to cook faster. But again, with oriental cooking, it just cooks so quickly. It's really not an issue. I like white onion a little bit better than yellow onion for this. A little bad spot right there. <sighs> Allie's still kind of keeping tabs on the antelope. There we go. So let's see. Why don't we do this? I'll vary the ingredients on this stir fry all the time. Sometimes it's just what I have on hand, veggie wise. I don't have to go with these ingredients, nor do you. I'm gonna go kind of small with these ones. This onion doesn't look that good. Not really. Not awesome. Good enough though. Get the job done for outdoor cooking. What do you guys think, right about there? I don't want to waste this. A little bit more. I kind of tend towards more spiciness. Like with the Cajun seasoning and stuff. A little bit. Alright, cabbage will be next. We'll rinse it off again once it's all ready in the bowl. And for this, we're going to do it kind of thin. Oh, this is good cabbage. Look how green that is. You guys like cabbage? I know a lot of people don't. I love it. I love it. You could substitute maybe bok choy. Another vegetable in there. A little bit of rottenness there in the middle. Kaka. Use whatever you want. This cabbage will really cook down too. Actually, that looks like purple cabbage in the middle. That's not really rot or anything. It's pretty wild. This is one reason why we're going to by the way, cook it separately because there's so much volume to cabbage. See that? It looks like a huge amount, doesn't it? It's not really. It is gonna be a little bit heavy if you decide to backpack this recipe in. 
it is what it is. I'll usually do a recipe like this on the first night, and if I have a snow bank like we do out here for refrigerating, I can use it on multiple nights. Just pack the weight in on the bivouac, bivouac style of camping. Let's see, I like how small these are because I don't have to waste them. Put some peppers in there. Oh man, that's gonna be good. Good, good, good. Even better since we're out in the woods. You guys know what I'm talking about? Get that appetite when you're out in the middle of nowhere. Even marginal food tastes good. <laughs> Maybe that's why I came out here, by the way. <laughs> Make sure this recipe is better than it really is. I'm kind of the cook in our house. Not Mrs. Nothing Fancy. She does cook. When it's time to get serious, good chow on the line, I'll step up to the stove. That's right. I don't really like cooking, though. i got to tell you that. It just takes so long. It's time consuming. Takes away from TNP, other stuff I need to get done, projects. Let's do some yellow pepper right here. I don't know how long this video is going to be. I really don't see how I could do it justice in less than 30 minutes. Who knows, though? We'll see. We'll see. I could, you know, edit it way down so I cut out all the details. Kind of like Allie running after the antelope. It's not so much a cooking show, though, as a lifestyle video. It's pretty much what all a TMP is, is a lifestyle. I think most guys get that. Oh, those are going to add some color, some flavor. Excellent. All right, that should be enough for one person. Holy cow, nothing fancy. How much do you eat? I don't know. Okay, so here's some water over here. Can you see that? I can't even tell, man. It's so freaking bright out here. So, unscrew this lid a little bit. We're going to rinse this a little bit. You know, it's out in the woods, the out of doors. I don't worry so much about, you know, I don't know. Rinsing stuff off. You're going to eat a little bit of dirt, a little bit of gunk. It's just the way it goes. No big deal. Did I miss anything? Got the onion, celery. Oh, yeah, carrot. I need to throw the carrots in there. Now, normally I don't buy these, but these are uh, organic carrots. I think the whole organic thing is a little bit oversold. It's a bunch of marketing hype. But I like the way these look. They were only a little bit more... So that's what we're doing. I forgot to bring a peeler, so I'm just going to scrape these off. I'm out in the woods too, so... Oh, the desert. I'm not really worried about organic stuff like onions or carrot peels falling on the ground. They'll dry up. Be gone before you know it. Now with my carrots, I will cut them a little bit diagonally. See how I'm doing that? So I'm trying to get a real nice plank of carrots. That's another reason why I like these ones, is that I could get a plank. And I'm not going to go too thick with them. In stir-frying, we're not going to keep them on the stove and boil them. That's what we want to avoid. Sometimes with this recipe, I end up doing just that. <laughs> and I may do that again, but I'm going to try not to. Nice planks. Oh, those are looking good. Let's try one. Mmm, those are good carrots, dudes. Really good. No funky aftertaste. Allie likes carrots. I'm not sure where she is at. She's off with antelope, I guess. Scrape this one off. Mmm. -mm. Man, that's good. Now, if I would have had all this ready made, all the veggies cut, the chicken cut, this is like a 10 minute meal. But since I did no prep work, Doing it on the tailgate here. A little bit longer. Still quick though. That's like more than enough carrots, don't you guys think? And then I gotta cook the chicken. Cut it and then cook it. Separately, like I was saying. That's the way I do it. The reason is I can maintain a really high heat to sear the chicken, to sear the vegetables. If I throw everything in together, in my experience, it just doesn't work as good. I know. Ouch. Dang it, I just cut myself. Doggone it. Did you see that? Look at that. That sucks. 
right there. I just barely nicked it. There we go. Welcome to the Nut and Fancy Cooking Show. <laughs> oh, freak. I gotta put a band aid on this real quick. Band aided up. Show goes on. I'm actually gonna use the plain edged A.G. Russell cook knife for this. The serrated on this cold steel will kind of grab the meat and it's not ideal. It was ideal for cutting me, apparently. Perfect. Okay, here we go. Like butter. Love this knife. Lots of great kitchen knives out there. Hey, nothing fancy. Review kitchen knives. No. No thanks. I'll leave it to the cooking shows to do that. Not usually. I think I did do a A.G. Russell review back in 09 or 08. Just a couple cooking knives. I'm going to cook the, cut these kind of small, by the way. You see this? I'm doing it. Let me kind of bring you down here into my business so you can see it. Hopefully the shadow isn't causing you a problem. Right now, here's the time and date. 7 Feb, about 3 p.m., 2013. Tailgate stir fry in TMP. Oh, yeah. Usually I'll rinse this chicken too. A little bit. So I have a separate bowl for that, I think. Yeah. All right, here. Is that enough meat? I think I'm going to go ahead and cook this one too. Here's why, because if I take it back to the compound, it may go bad, and it's better to cook it up, and the family can eat it. I might have some leftover. So let's go ahead and cook it now. Hate wasting food. Hate it. Try my best not to waste. Especially if I'm hunting. If I've killed some game, venison, elk, grouse, sasquatch, whatever. Don't waste it. I'm not really a hunter, but I will do it for subsistence reasons sometime. sometimes. There we go. Okay, so we go over here. We're going to rinse it out. Are you guys bored yet? Allie's chilling out there. I wouldn't be kind of doing the same procedure backpacking because I do not have unlimited water. Tailgate cooking, car camping, as I call it, is a lot more lenient of your resources because I can pack in a big old thing of Rubbermaid water like that. If I'm backpacking, that usually means I have to go hike to purify, and that's a project. Usually an hour, at least an hour, depending on where my water source is. There we go. So chicken's rinsed. Rinse off my chicken gunk. Now we can come over here to the stove and get things going. All right, let's get this Primus fire hole cranking. I think I'll do the veggies on this side. This will be the rice side. Oh, yeah. Nice when we don't have wind, I'll tell you that much. I think you guys saw that when we went to Inns and Peak, did the breakfast cookout. Full-size pots and pans with our tailgate party. We don't need backpacking ones again. So this will be for the minute rice. I forgot to bring a dedicated measuring cup. Real easy way to do that with minute rice is I'll just pour it into a container right here and then I'll pour in an equal amount of water. So right, right there. I guess I got graduations right here on this REI mug if I wanted to use that. Take a look. Equal amounts of water and rice with minute rice. Don't put too much water in. You don't need it. I got a little bit of salt in the rice already. I'll put a little bit more in here to help it boil. Have a lid for this rice. It'll save energy and make things go so much quicker. Now with your minute rice, if you happen to put too little water in, you can always add a tablespoon or more at a time and make it just right. So we're going to go ahead and let that boil and start cooking our chicken. So here we go on this side. The cooking show out here in the desert. By the way, let's check in with our antelope. Where'd they go? Oh, they're out there still. 
Yeah, they are. They kind of wandered off a little bit. Maybe they got tired of you, Allie. What do you think? Yes? Where is she? I can't even see in the viewfinder. There she is. Dog. So I'm going to heat this frying pan up like a lot. Let's take a look at the flame. Turn on the igniter. Dude, look at my freaking finger. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't get blood in your stir fry. Yeah, it's bleeding. That thing cut me. Whatever. Ain't the first time, won't be the last. Let's take a look at this flame on this Primus fire hole. Not too sure I like that name. Fire hole? Sounds like blow hole. Let's see what we got going here. The proof will be in the cooking. So if it really cooks those veggies, which requires a lot of heat, then you know this Primus is doing pretty good out of a disposable cylinder. I got it in the stand, by the way, that came with a fire hole. You can fill those up. They do make the adapters. I recommend it. Save some resources. A few steel targets in the back. Might do some shooting later. With dog diggity dog. She thinks she's going to get something to eat right here. That's why she's hanging out. Back into the mothership. Again, I need really high heat to cook this chicken. Don't warp your frying pan though. Don't do that. Not good. Here the frying pan start to crackle a little bit. Now it's time to put in the oil. You don't need a ton. That's probably a little too much actually. And I'm just gonna run it around like that. And then we're gonna wait till the oil smokes a little bit and that's when we're putting in the chicken. I don't like how much oil I got in there. Let me take a little bit of it out. Just soak it up with a rag. You don't want it to be greasy. It's a healthy meal, right? Looks like our water's ready for the minute rice. All right, let's give it a shot. That's what we want to hear. Yeah. Okay, for minute rice, we're going to go ahead and dump this in right now. Turn this off. Shake the pan a little bit, and it'll start basically cooking. Because we do our chicken separately from the vegetables. This is where my soy sauce is going to come into play. You want to season the meat all by itself. Give it a chance to absorb it. Kind of like that right there. That's what I'm talking about. I'm going to throw in a few sesame seeds right now. That way they'll get a little bit brown with the chicken. See how the liquid's starting to come out of the chicken? That will cook off. And when it does is when we're really going to start searing the chicken. Here comes some Creole seasoning for tailgate stir fry. Nothing fancy style. Oh yeah! Hit that stuff. More salt. I kind of err on more seasoned for the chicken because when it mixes with the vegetables it's not going to be quite as potent. It'll be diluted. <coughs> All right, Primus, I need some heat. Let's do it. Full on. Seems like it's doing a good job. It's about what I'd see at the house. About like that. Ooh, you guys getting hungry? Man! Delicious. Don't you think? Huh? What do you think? Hey, where'd those antelope go? I don't know, Dad. All I know is you're cooking and I'm going to be nearby when that happens. Chicken cooking up. This is fun. Tactical Doodle is really busy in college these days. That's why he's not with me. 
Everyone else is working their jobs. They can't come out short notice. Hey, let's go cook stir fry on the tailgate. When? Uh, two hours? That's kind of how I work, man. It's always short notice. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the way my schedule is. It's looking good. Let me go get that teriyaki sauce and start putting that in as well. By the way, you don't need teriyaki sauce to make this work. You don't need it. You don't need blood either, for your reference. You don't need that. We're gonna save this sauce, thicken it up, fine tune the seasoning on it, and that's what we're gonna use. So I have teriyaki and kikamon soy sauce as the base. Use whatever soy sauce you want. I wouldn't need more of that, I can tell you that right now. Now, while that's cooking, we're gonna go ahead and put some cornstarch in water and mix it up. Right here. Put a little water in there. I did bring a wire whisk with me. It's probably too much water. Dump a little bit out. Right about there. Notice I'm not measuring anything. That's pretty much how I cook. T-lar, that looks about right. Hope that isn't fogging your lens up. Probably is. Dump a little cornstarch in there. We're gonna wire whisk it. This is not going in right now. I'm just showing you in front of the camera so it's getting ready for the final stage when we mix everything together. All right? There we go. We'll do it a final mix before we use it. That's our cornstarch set off to the side now as the chicken continues to cook. Time to drain off some of that liquid. That way we can start browning the chicken. So this will be a little bit tricky, draining this without dumping it out with what I got with me now. Let's see how it works. We might be in for a good laugh. Checking in with a finger. <laughs> Bleeding like crazy. Awesome. There we go, drain some of that out. Yeah, with the tripod in the way, it's a little bit tough. Let's put this over here. I think it'll work. Because you don't want to overcook your chicken. It's probably cooked enough. I want to brown it now. I've heated that liquid up enough where I don't have to worry about chicken cooties that could get you sick. So it's been boiling pretty much. Uh, you can't really see it. You'll see it if it dumps though. Excellent. Wow, look at how those two chicken breasts cook down. Maybe it's a good thing we did cook both of them. So I'm gonna brown this a little bit. Let's take a taste. Mmm. Dang, that's good. Mmm. Yeah, buddy. Minute rice, about done. Don't lift that lid on the minute rice for like 10 minutes. Leave it on, otherwise you'll ruin the whole thing. I think the instructions say that too. Oh, look who came back for us, Dogness. Here's our liquid, our sauce. Oh, that looks good. Look at that. See those sesame seeds starting to pop a little bit? That's probably about good. I would like them seared a little bit more, but I don't want to overcook it. So we're going to take this off. I'm liking the stove, by the way. Really liking it. It's just like cooking at home almost. We'll set the chicken aside. It's really good. It's not like 
20 degrees outside right now, otherwise this would get cold so quick. 40 degrees though, it can stay out for a little bit, it won't hurt anything. Make it super cold. We're gonna heat our frying pan up again. We're gonna put a little more oil in it again, and we're cooking the veggies. We're gonna sauce the veggies as well, just like we did the chicken, but first we're gonna sear it. Now I have so much, I have so many vegetables though, it's gonna to be tough to really cook it with high heat. What you would really need is a huge wok and a big old flame. So the entire pan is just rocking hot. I'll do the best I can here with what we have. It's about enough oil. Shake it around a little bit. You could use butter or margarine for this. If you're in a survival situation, fat of some sort. Uh, yeah, I love that sound. We don't have to use all this cabbage either. Take some of that home. There's those onions and celery. Remember what I said about the cabbage, it will cook down quite a bit. Man, that looks good. Yeah, I'm going to leave just a little bit out of it for now. So let your stir fry veggies sit for a minute. Don't stir them yet. You want them to cook, you want them to get brown. Again, if we were doing this right, we would have a huge wok and a huge flame. We don't have that surface area and we don't have that ultimate level of heat, so we're doing the best we can with what we got. It'll still work out, but we're not really flash cooking right now. Just leave it right there. Got blood on the lid of the rice, that's awesome. <laughs> Speaking of which, I think I'm going to turn this on low, the rice, since it is, I don't know, 40 out here. I don't want it to get cold, so I'll just crank it like that, turn the igniter on the Primus. Yeah, that's going. And then we'll check in with that here in just a little bit. Should be fine. I turned it just a minute ago, probably too soon, because it wasn't quite browned enough. There's some browning right there, you can see it? We don't want to overdo the veggies, we want them to be crisp still, right? Hence the name stir fry. In fact, these are looking pretty good right now. It's real easy to overcook this stuff. We're not doing it today. We want it to be crunchy. You can see how that cabbage cooked down like we talked about. I have seasoned it already. I put some garlic salt in it. And now since we're pretty much nearing the end of cooking with these things, I'm gonna put some more soy sauce in it. Not blood though. About like that. Oh yeah. How about some sesame seeds? Yeah, I love sesame seeds. To add that nutty flavor to it, Disregard the blood. <laughs> I guess I'd have wiped that off. That's gross, man. Someone tuning into the show goes, man, what's the deal with the chef? Bleeding all over everything. It happens. I'm going to show it to you as it happens. Makes it funnier that way. All right, we turned the heat down on the minute rice. As you can see, it was boiling for sure. Shake it around a little bit. Make sure it's not sticking to the bottom. Oh, buddy, this is going to be freaking awesome. You know what, boys? We're ready to add our meat. Yeah, here it comes. Pre-cooked chicken. Tailgate stir-fry. Bang. And here comes our extra sauce. Not thickened yet. We're going to do that here in a second. Ah. Oh. A little bit too steamed. You can see there's a lot of liquid. I don't quite have the heat I need to really flash cook this stuff. It's good enough though. Oh man, that looks good. Now, my cornstarch water's right here. I'm gonna remix it because it's settled. 
You don't want a lot of this. You're just going to thicken the liquid. There's other alternatives to cornstarch you can use. This is just what I'm using today. About like that, I'm going to start off with. Then I watch my sauce as it bubbles and gets that cornstarch in it. And it gets thickened. A little bit more. Right about there. Oh, buddy. Dogness, this is looking good. Turn that heat down. We are ready to eat, boys. Right here, right now. Done. Primus Fire Hole 100, tailgate stir fry, minute rice. Once everything was cut and prepped, it takes about five to 10 minutes to cook, that's it. Turn that off, in fact. Let's eat. Let's check in with the rice before we pile it on. See how we did. Ah, I did cook it to the bottom a little bit by turning it on again. Decent. Not perfect. Decent. Probably a little overcooked. Thanks to me turning it on again. I dumped that into there. You no, know, regular backpack cooking is really a pain in the butt. Excellent. Excellent. Mm. Let's see, would I change anything about how this turned out? Mm, not much. I like it. We'll taste it here in a second, but the consistency of the sauce is about what I wanted. Glad I cooked both of those chicken breasts. I'll probably eat them myself right here, right now. Wish I had a lid for this frying pan. But I don't. Let's go get our drinks out of the ice box. What do you say? Have a Mexican Coke in there. It's not quite cold though. I love these things because they use cane sugar and not corn syrup. Regular Mexican Coke, awesome. We're gonna go with a Sprite Zero, more or less iced up. And it's time to eat. Thought I forgot about those, didn't you? Nope, topped them. Time to eat. Last cooking video I did, I heard some comments saying, hey, nothing fancy. We want to see you eating the food. All right, you sure about that? Here we go. She knows better than to touch that. All right, locking into the mothership. Let's see how this turned out. Take a look around first at our scenery. Oh, it's nice out here. Just gorgeous. 360 sweep, making you dizzy, no doubt. Here we go, tailgate stir fry, out in the wintry desert. See how it turned out. Take a taste. <coughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's excellent. It's really good. Now, for a really critical review of the sauce I put together. Mmm. That's good. Just right. Right consistency. Rice is a little bit overcooked, still decent. The cabbage is still crunchy. I didn't overcook that. Peppers give it just a very slight peppery taste. They too are crunchy still, like the celery. Crunch of the cashews. Mmm, dudes, wish you were here. Oh, man, that's good. I'm not lying to you either. If it sucked, I would tell you. You will probably see in the future where I get the things wrong. <laughs> okay, so for the stir fried chicken, Allie and I cooked it off the tailgate today. You don't have to do that. You can go backpacking with it. I've done it many times. 
in the decades past. I just prep everything. All the veggies are cooked, are cut up. The chicken's cut up. I'll freeze the chicken. So as I hike in for seven, eight hours, it's thawed by the time I get to my destination. Do what we did here, just use a camp stove. You're not gonna have the same size of pan probably unless you're really manly and you packed in something like we use today. But even with campware, you can make this happen. Man, it's so good. I love good food. Really love it. Whenever I can, I try to fit it into my adventure. It's really hard though because it takes time. I'm talking with my mouth full, but that's the way it's gotta be if I'm gonna narrate anything. One last look. Tailgate stir fried chicken. Highly recommended. Really easy to make. Season it to your own likes or dislikes. That is excellent. Here, Allie, catch you. She caught it. Healthy, too. Not a fattening meal. Enough calories to keep you going out here, but definitely not fattening. Nothing deep fried about it. I think I'll give Allie some of this later. She earned it with her antelope chasing, I guess. That's about it, boys. Mmm, that's good. I'm gonna finish eating. Thanks for joining me. This has been Tailgate Stir Fry from the Nut Fancy Project. That's awesome.